In this demonstration, you'll learn how to set up a steady state thermal electric conduction simulation to gauge the performance of a thermal electric cooler. To start, I'll select the electromagnetics template from the study panel. I need to import a geometry file, so I'll leave this set to the default. Next, I'll be asked to select my geometry. I'll select the geometry file for this cooler. Now I'll set the physics options. Since we want to apply a direct current to the cooler, I will select applied current here with a type of DC. I want a fully coupled thermal electric simulation, so I'll select this option for the electromagnetic thermal behavior. Now I'll specify the materials for the solid region. I want to assign three separate materials for this cooler, a copper plate and two semiconductors. So, I will begin by specifying the number of materials in this model as 3. Then, I will assign copper as material for the plate. I'll select one of the semiconductors and assign the second material. Because our desired material is not one of the defaults, I will assign other here. I can then set this to the desired material once I've applied the template. I will now repeat this process for the other semiconductor. AIM loads the geometry and sets up a simulation process with typical default settings for geometry, mesh, physics, and results. AIM has automatically created the physics solution process. The red exclamation mark here tells me that the physics task needs more information to complete the simulation. I'll click it to go into the physics task. You can also see that contacts were created for this case. I need to assign the material for these two semiconductors. I can either click here or right click and select from the fix menu. I already set the semiconductor as the location for this material assignment. So all I need to do is create my material. I'll create a new material by typing the name. I'll name it N-Type Semiconductor and then click on it so I can add my solid material properties. First, I'll add isotropic resistivity and set the value. I finished defining the material properties by adding isotropic Seebeck coefficient and isotropic thermal conductivity. You can see the values here. I'll repeat this process to assign material properties to the p-type semiconductor. You can see it defined here. So I have set my three material assignments, copper, n-type semiconductor, and p-type semiconductor. I am now going to add some physics conditions. First, I'll set a temperature. I'll select the bottom faces of the copper plate and right click to add a temperature constraint. And then set the value. Next, I'll ground the end of this P type semiconductor. I select the end face and right click to add a voltage. I'll set this to zero to indicate it's grounded. I will also set a current on the input electric terminal and a heat flow to the copper strap. So I have set four conditions total, temperature and heat flow as thermal conditions, and voltage and current as electromagnetic. Now I'll solve the physics solution task. Because the meshing task was also ready, it will be automatically updated first. Everything's finished, so now I can view my results. I'll click on the results task and then evaluate. The template has inserted three results by default, including the temperature contour result. This simulation results in a cold junction you can see that the face with the heat flux has a temperature close to zero. 
Next, I can view the electric potential result. You can see the current passes from the input terminal to the ground, from higher voltage to lower voltage as expected. I also have the current density available. This concludes this demonstration of an end-to-end -end steady state thermal electric conduction simulation in AIM.